Okay, just going to start with some general thanks. So thank you, Steph and Wayne, for developing KitKat and KitKat, and and uh, maintaining the KitCon, KitKat community. Uh, thank you, Hubert, for bringing them over. I couldn't make it to KitCon Europe, so that was a big bummer. But lo, lo, lo and behold, two months, few months, few months later, they're here. So thank you for bringing KitCon here, and. Um, Thank you for giving me a platform to talk about this little topic. Uh, a little bit disclaimer, it's a bit of a last minute thing. Uh, there was a speaker who pulled out uh, just this week or a few days ago. Uh, so I didn't have a lot of time to prepare this. It's not as polished as I would like it. Um, and I have my notes here, so, <laughs> so bear with me. Oh. I also changed the name a bit, so. It was supposed to be des uh, DFM design rules that every engineer should know. That's a bit of a like an SEO title. But uh, if we have time, we can go into a few DFM rules. It leads in quite well with Eric's talk. So he, talk he showed a bit of the, the plugin for KeyCon, for KeyCat, that is essentially uh, Hua Chu's DFM, uh, DFM software, but for KeyCon, KeyCat. <laughs> um, yeah, so why, why I decided to talk about this, um, it really, one reason was because when Hubert went to KeyCon Europe, he, he mentioned the, the DFM software, and then a lot of people were really interested in it, but Hubert only had the Chinese version installed, so <laughs> I thought it would be good to talk a bit more about the, um, in English and explain a bit more about DFM in general. And the second, the second reason is because of the, um, this ruler I designed for KeyCon Europe. Uh, again, a lot of people were asking Hubert about it and he didn't know how to explain. So, but I, w I wouldn't say I'm a DFM in, uh, expert. I, I, my job is to promote DFM and share knowledge about it. So we'll, we'll get by. So just a basic outline. We'll see how, f how much we can get in. Uh, okay, what is DFM? So design for manufacturing manufacturer is the, I like to use this, this definition. So it's an ideology or the purpose of making hardware or product development more efficient in terms of time and cost and improving reliability. So it's, it's quite a general definition. You can kind of say DRCs fall into this, but I'll explain later why it's a bit different. So a major point about it is it, it reduces development cycles. So you all know prototyping is, is pretty expensive expensive to do, especially with like say assembly, uh, PCB production, assembly, procu pro components, procurement. Hello? Better? Better? Okay. I can hear myself. Right. Yeah. So as engineers, we all know how much it's, how reducing the number of development cycles really helps your product flow. And uh, I recently talked to Wayne and he said that 30 years ago, a two layer PCB would cost about 2,000, uh, a couple of thousand dollars. So you really don't want to mess up. <laughs> but even, even now with like really cheap PCBs, uh, the pace of development is, is much, much faster. So you don't want to get left behind. Um, oh, wrong way. Yeah, so really, when, if you look up DFM, you'll probably find a picture like that. And it really just sums it up, like, the cost of change increases as product development goes on. So really, the best idea is to solve problems as, as fast as you can, as soon as you can. Basically, the earlier a problem is found, the easier it is to resolve. So how do you do that? Well, you need a lot of experience and you need some knowledge. Um, yeah, well, it, it applies to any product. It doesn't necessarily just apply to electronics, but yeah, uh, electronics has a lot of pieces to the puzzle, so it's very easy for this to go wrong. And there are a lot of guidelines that can be followed to ease the process along. And of course, as um, in Seth's talk, you can also use DRCs, you can also use custom rules. Uh, I won't go into too much detail, which is a custom rule, which is a DSC, which is a DFM rule. There's a lot of overlap, 
So, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Why is DFM difficult? So, um, even now with the maker movement and a lot of people uh, picking up electronics as a hobbyist or and sharing that knowledge with open source, manufacturing is still a mystery for a lot of people, I think. So, not everyone is fortunate enough to have an assembly line in their, back, in their backyard, let alone a PCME manufacturing plant. So, um, this is something that manufacturers can help with. Like, good communication with your PCME manufacturer can really educate you. Um, lack of design experience, yeah. So, we have a lot of new designers around that may not have a great deal amount of experience designing PCBs. And that, that and yeah, again, we, I was talking to Wayne. You may have all the design theory in the world, but if you have no actual hands-on experience, then you're, you're missing out on a lot, a lot of it, knowledge. Um, uh, communication with the manufacturer. So, especially with overseas contract manufacturers, say like China, this is where that major connection with your manufacturer can break apart. So, at, at Huachu, we have this is a big problem we're aware of. There are ways to tackle it. The, the, um, this is an ongoing challenge for us. So um, this is something the software tries to help with. And then the last one is that every situation is unique. So I can give you a bunch of rules, but that only applies to, say, uh, some basic designs. If you're building for aerospace, if you're building automobiles, that would be, you would have a new different set of DFM rules, right? Uh, so, and also, every engineer has different preferences. Say, like, uh, the silk screen. If, the, if you're making a development board, then you want the silk screen to be perfect, right? You want it to be very clear and crisp and no, no, none of the designators, um, all the designators should be shown. But if you're making an enclosed product, then who cares, right? <laughs> okay, I tried to outline a bit of differences between DRC and DFM, because there is a lot of overlap between the two. Um, but one of the biggest things is that DRC is performed within the PCB design file, so say in, in KiCad, but for say, uh, say Huachu DFM, the DFM check is performed on Gerber files. And this is something uh, a lot of people have, have, have problem, problems getting their head around. It's like, yeah, your, your design may be perfect in KiCad, but somewhere along the line, if you export the Gerber files incorrectly, then you may get absolute crap. <laughs> so, Gerber files is the like the standard for producing PCB files, pr producing PCBs. But if you have no idea what's inside, then you're in big trouble. So, uh, specificity. DRCs are very specific to the KitKat, to the to the EDA tool. Like if you're setting up DRC in KiCad, it's very different to setting up um, in in LTM or Cadence or such and such. Um, so you're very dependent on the tool to be able to perform that for you. And uh, DFM tools, they generally work on Gerber files, so that's the de facto standard. So if you have a Gerber file, you can, you can run DS, DFM on it. Okay, uh, the limits. Uh, DRC is a lot like a yes-no, a pass-fail kind of gives you a pass-fail kind of response. So. Uh, it's, it really depends what you put into it. If you say, I want zero point, my minimum drill hole size is 0 0.2, then if you go below that, I'm gonna give you an error. If you, above that, I won't give you an error. But really, that just depends on what you input in, into, into KiCad. Um, oh, just another thing. This is not saying like DRCs are bad or uh, DFM is better or something. They just both have their own different niches. And really, you should be performing both. That's the idea. Um, Huachu DFM is based on actual data from 
the general PCB industry. So it's not just specific to Hua Chu. It also takes into account some other other manufacturers that may not may have better capabilities, may have worse capabilities. So it's very very general. Um, data available for analysis. I think we saw in Seth's presentation the data available for KiCad to do rules is immense. So you can pull on footprint data, you can pull on, on um, the, the, the PCB data, you can pull, pull from the bottom file or uh, component data. But for DFM, you just rely on Gerber files. And most of the time, when you send your PCB to production, you just give them Gerber files. So what you give it is what you get, essentially. And leading on from that, net list information, uh, you can import net list, net list information to a DFM check, but the level of uh, detail is not as good as a, DFM, a, a EDA tool. Okay. So another, another problem with DRCs is that uh, the general process is that you choose a manufacturer and then you ask them for their, their, their specification, you ask them for their, their constraints, their manufacturing capabilities, and maybe they can give you a file. This is, uh, I don't, last time I checked, Keycon doesn't have a DRC file kind of feature, but the, the idea is the same. You, you, you obtain the specification from them and then import them into your tool. So immediately a problem with that is if you change a manufacturer, you have to go through the whole process again. And not everyone will give you a complete spec that covers all of the, uh, the possible, uh, possible rules in, in that for a, DF, for a DRC file would contain. And if you do support DRC, if the, if the, if the EDA tool does support DRC files, then uh, they would have to uh, produce a DRC file for multiple EDA tools, so uh, say Eagle or AD, and a lot of a lot of manufacturers just don't have that capability. So you all have the the ruler in your bags. I thought I'd go over a bit about this. Yes, yeah, very short presentation. So these are some things that I think DRC, DRC checks won't point out. So everyone knows there's a minimum drill hole size, but a maximum drill hole size for plated holes is not so common. Um, for, for this, uh, the PCB manufacturing industry today, at least in China, we use a lot of uh, negative film processing, but to it makes pr uh, production faster. It removes a lot of problems. But one thing it doesn't handle well is large holes, like like a a large drill, plated drill hole. So this is something that can can be can be manufactured, but you would have to change to a positive manufacturing process, and that it it could it usually means Longer, longer manufacturing time or, and or uh, additional costs. So this is something a DRC would not tell you. Um, similar with plated slots, I, have, I haven't seen many DRCs that actually give you the option to enter this kind of data. So plated slot width and aspect ratio. And hatched copper pore dimensions, it's a bit of not, not used as much these days, but very few manufacturers actually state it. Um, plated wall to hole, plated hole wall to wall distance. I think Keycat might have that, yeah. But generally, uh, and then fiducials and castellated hole dimensions. Um, the, HQ DFM software is based on the industry, so it will give you two warnings. It will give you like a red warning for absolute violations. You really shouldn't do that. 
you probably will get rejected by your manufacturer. And there are yellow warnings that maybe it will increase the price. Maybe it's not, yeah, it's not the most reliable thing to do. And then you can, you can choose um, per your design. So say for a DRC file, you get from the manufacturer, their minimum drill hole size is say 0 0.2 millimeters. But that costs extra. Um, 0 0.3 is the ideal if you want to save money, but since it's the minimum, maybe someone uses 0 0.2 in their design, and then they, they, they have no idea that they, they actually increase the cost of their PCB. So it's just this kind of knowledge that's obtained through communicating with your manufacturer that um, overseas, overseas manufacturers may lack and by producing a software like Hotel DFM, that, that educates everyone about DFM. And so we're more on the same page and it's easier to communi communicate these things. Um, right here. That's really it for my presentation, but I'm gonna open up Hotel DFM. I mean, kind of. <laughs> Already, this is Huacho DFM, the desktop version. Uh, it's very similar to the plugin that Eric showed. The, the basic DFM uh, functions are, are there, but I'll just, just show you some in English. So we just start by opening the files. These are just some test files. And then we run DFM analysis. So just a few seconds. Doesn't take too, too much. So these are, the, these are the things that have been checked. The ones in red have a, a rather serious problem. The ones in yellow are just they have some suggestions, maybe for uh, reducing cost, um, something like this. Um, say a problem like this, you would really have to refer to your own requirements. So maybe if you're just doing a simple board, this doesn't really matter. If you're doing high-speed signals, then, then you should probably take, pay attention to this. And then similarly, you can just click, and it will go right to the, the location of the problem. Unconnected traces, this is something a DSC could pick up. But yeah, it's another, it's another layer of, of ensuring your design doesn't have mistakes. 
And like I mentioned, for the 0 0.2 millimeter drill hole, this is only a yellow warning because it will increase cost, but it doesn't mean it can't be manufactured. And we, this is, as you see this quite often, because um, if I can click here to show the copper layer, this is uh, the firm was for a, a component package. And this is, this is from the footprint, right? So even if you think you've, used, you've only used uh, 0 0.33 millimeter drill holes, you're, there could be a package that uses 0 0.2, and this comes out a lot. Uh, it's kind of a, eh, it's not a big problem, but you may inadvertently be increasing the cost of your PCB. Do, 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 do. Yeah, just um, exposed soda mask. And it will highlight exactly where the problem is. Do, 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 do. Any more? Shall we look at? Yeah, and you have to use some common sense. Like, does it really matter? This kind of problem, it's up to you to decide. Don't be annoying. Yeah, that's really all from me now. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Are there were questions? Okay. Uh, hello? Hello? Uh, my question is, uh, will the manufacturer provide some templates rules about DRC or DFM for the EDA tools, like the KiCad or something else? Because most beginner designers are not so worried or they just don't want to care about too much details in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Maybe a template design rules will help them to design, to complete, to complete their, maybe their ideas more efficiently. So my question is this. Yes, um, we pre I previously encountered this problem. Uh, a lot of people were asking, can you give a DRC file just to, um, so they can just import it into the CAD tool but then you run into the problem, how to define the limit. So again, with the problem with 0 0.2 drill holes, that, that's, a li that's the production limit. But what you don't know is that you, could be, you may not need such small holes. So, um, so it, it, it came down to producing multiple DRC files for a single EDA software. And it, it was just a bit, Clunky. <laughs> uh, yes, I know, but but I think it's better than nothing. And maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. and and we know that the manufacturer, the cost, the cost is depends on your process. Mm -hmm. And the, the the smallest your the smaller your whole drills, the, the higher 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 prices you pay. And that's mm -hmm. that's the rules. And maybe I think uh, you may have some static statistic data about. Uh, most people love the pro the process that most people love. I think uh, these rules, the DRC or DFM rules, based on the most common manufacturer process, mm -hmm. uh, maybe is helpful. Uh, yeah. That's my idea. So actually, Huashu uh, DFM it is based on general uh, PCB industry, so it won't say don't do smaller than this or, or such. It, it will say it may cause a problem with some manufacturers. It, it may not for whichever manufacturer you choose, but generally in the industry, like say, the current, the industry in China right now, six, 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 six mil width spacing, trace width spacing is, is pretty, it's the standard, but some manufacturers can't go down to four, four mil. Some manufacturers can go to even lower. So uh, the software will point this out. There's a, there's a description there, so I have to translate that. So. So common is the expert. Expert always is conservative. So if I answer this question, I will say, why do DFM provide rules you need? So just click, one click, DFM analyze, you will get everything. That's the recommended rules. 
just as a side note, as another answer to that, uh, the question was, um, there is a way to you can kind of work around uh, that. You could create a template, um, a KiCad pro template, where you have maybe you have Watcho low, lowest cost. So you put all the the the, the watch who's, uh like you have uh, your smallest drill size that you don't get charged more for is 0.5 millimeters. That you make that as your minimum drill size, um, and then you just create a template in, in KiCad, and then every new project you just create a project from that template. And then if you have any special design rules, maybe you say uh, watch you maximum capability. You know, I have some real high end board I'm doing, and then you just say I don't care because the cost isn't relevant. Not too many people have that, but once in a while it does happen. Um, and you could create a different template for that particular use. Uh, and KiCad, if you would happen to create a template like that, KiCad would be more than happy to put it, add it yeah. to our templates if it's something you'd be interested in. Because like, like a lot of things like that, if you're interested in it, there's high probability somebody else has the same problem. You're, you know, your problems aren't necessarily unique to you. So if that's something that you'd be w willing to contribute. Personally, I don't have a, a watch you uh, list of costs and right here in front of me. Um, but I mean, if you if you have that and something you think that other uh, makers would find useful, yeah, we would add it to KeyCat. Thank you. And. 我就想补充一下刚刚这个问题，就是他前面说的其实是 for 的那个呃初学者嘛 ，beginner， 所以呃，他 K K 的是可以 import board constraints， 所以有一些呃开源的项目，比如他是 S T M 三二的 M C U， 那么可以用那个项目作为一个 baseline， 呃，作为一个基础，然后 import 他的那个呃 design cons 呃 constraints 就可以了，不需要。说厂家提供一个变相各种设计的一个 constraints。我想问一个关于 DFM 问题，就是，嗯，因为在呃投 PCB 文件的生产的时候，会有选择，比如说呃最小孔径零点二毫米会加钱，零点三毫米是一个标准的比较便宜的标准价钱。但是用 DFM 的时候，嗯，它大概是会显示一个 warning 黄色的警报，但是它没有显示出。这个会对价格会有多少影响？这时候就是他和我去投产时候那个参数，呃，对我就是对价格的影响，对我没有影响。啊、uh, ，Shall I translate? So, <laughs> so uh, the problem was, um, when he when when placing a PCB order, you you can see quite obviously that that something like a drill hole size would change the price, but in the DFM, it's not. Not that obvious, but um, really, I think you have to take DFM with a pinch of salt. Like with DRC files, DRC, with DRC, you also have to take it with a pinch of salt. Like as long as you understand what, why the error is coming up, then it, it doesn't really make sense to say this is a red error. You you can't produce it. So that's the purpose of yellow errors. And that's something a DRC might not pick up, depending on how you configure it. Does that help? Hello, I'll answer your question. You asked if there are some designs that may be related to the cost of sales, right? Actually, in the DFM, there are some of these warnings. For example, you can see the most important limitations of the DFM. Uh, Chao, 对对对对，对会会增加成本，对对对。啊
So, so uh, just a quick translation. So the problem is that the question is that if we have a, any capabilities in DFM, that it will suggest to you, you know, if you change, for example, the minimum width from uh, 0.3 to 0.1, how many money you can save, cost you can save. Okay, we can talk about it. So probably we can have some list of the price sensitive items, for example, the drill size or, or the track width. Yes, we can do that as a plugin. If you're doing that on the plugin, wouldn't you need some sort of API to, because today's price might not be tomorrow's price, so every time I run it, wouldn't it need to query uh, your office or whoever and to query the current price? Yes. Yes. And this that's is built exactly in, and that is going to be built in? That's correct. So it will call the server. So, of course, the plugin is always open source, but it will, it will just extract the, 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 the weights, real size, these basic parameters, and convert it into Gerber. So your source file is always safe. So the Gerbers will be sent to the server for analyze. Yes. And then it will be always, the settings is on the server. So yes. you will always get the latest price or latest, you know, manufacturer capability parameters. Nice. Very that's nice. Thinking. Any questions? I think you, you have a question. Any more questions for our DFM? If no, thanks, Carmen. Thanks for your great talk.